HLS, show me how. M365 data loss prevention for Microsoft Teams chat and channel messages. Hi, my name is Michael Gennati, and I am a principal technology specialist for the Microsoft Healthcare and Life Sciences Group. And today, we are bringing the cool to compliance. So, uh, a lot of customers have asked in the past, you know, hey, it's great with Microsoft DLP in 365 that I can go in, I can set it up, we can do different areas, we can set up policies looking for all kind of, you know, personal identifying data, and we can set that up and look at those documents in a team, right? Because underneath the hood, it's all just SharePoint. But what happens with chat and channel messaging? That hasn't been a scenario until recently, but it's here now. And we're gonna take a look. I'm gonna walk you through setting it up step-by-step. Step. It's simple, it's easy. Hey, it can be fun. Compliance can be cool. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so before we get started, I just want to make a quick note. You know, as we look at DLP, and we're going to be popping in here in the admin center just a bit. Think about DLP in M365, and then think about it in terms of Teams, right? Where we're doing the chat and channel conversation. So as I mentioned previously, you know, if you have an E3 and above, you've got the DLP that's there with Office 365 slash Microsoft 365, um, you have the capability around documents, around exchange content, you know, anything in SharePoint to be able to pull DLP, OneDrive, and to be able to look for personal identifiers and do all that. That's been around. But if you want data loss prevention expressly for Microsoft Teams channel and chat messaging, this is and i'll have a link to this on the the page but i just want you to quick take note it says data loss prevention capabilities were recently added to microsoft teams chat and channel messages for users licensed for office 365 advanced compliance that's important to note so if you want that chat and channel messaging capability where it's you know real-time ingestion you need to have office 365 advanced compliance and it says that's available as a standalone option. It's also included in Office 365 E5, Microsoft 365 E5 compliance. Office 365 and Microsoft 365 E3 include DLP protection for SharePoint Online, OneDrive, and Exchange. This also includes files shared through Teams, right? So the lower one that I mentioned, E3, that's for right for SharePoint, OneDrive, Exchange, because Teams uses SharePoint, it includes those files. But you need to have this other. I hate talking licensing. I'm not a licensing guy. I'm a geek. So we're going to go ahead and close this because I don't want to look at it anymore. Actually, I'll leave it so I can grab the link later. But we're going to take a look at how to set it up for... Um, chat and channel messaging. So let's go ahead. We are in our 365 admin center and we're gonna come on down here below to compliance. When we select compliance, it's gonna open up. We're in the 365 compliance center and we've got all kinds of goodies here, including policies. When I click that, it has set policies to govern data, manage devices, receive alerts, data loss prevention. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but I don't see the Teams one. Aha, something just lights up if you've got the right licensing. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And you'll note, we're gonna then have here, I don't have any DLP policy set up. So we're gonna take a look. If you've ever done a DLP policy in the past, um, then you know this is where you go. This is what it looks like. Nothing has changed we've just lit up a new capability. If I go ahead and select create a policy, in this case, let's go ahead and say medical and health. We'll say in this one, you know, if we see any HIPAA information, right, that falls under the HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A, Health Insurance Act, we're gonna go ahead and select next, and it's gonna give us a name. We can give it a description if we want. I'm just gonna take the default, and it says protect content in exchange email, Teams chat and channel messages, and OneDrive and SharePoint documents. 
This is the same as it was before, but it's now added this piece right here, the chat and channel message. If you want to see it broken out, let's go ahead. Let me choose specific locations. And there we go. So now we can see here is this additional piece that was not there previously on Teams chat and channel messages. So we can do all accounts. We can exclude accounts. We can choose specific accounts that we might want to have. I'm not going to do that. And maybe I just want to have this policy. Um, actually, we're going to do it across the board, right? So we don't want it here. We'll uncheck SharePoint sites because, well, actually, let's go ahead and check that too. We could choose specific or exclude certain sites. We'll just leave it as is. And we're going to make sure it's not an email. There we go. Then what are we going to do? Find those content here. It's looking for those PII identifiers, medical terms. We can edit that. Detect when this content is shared with people outside of my organization. That's what we want to look for. Um, we could choose advanced settings if we wanted. I'm going to just select that. Select next. Show policy tips and send them an email notification. So we could do the least intrusive, right? We're just going to notify and educate and say, hey, is this really what you want to do? And I can come in here, click customize, and then say, you know, what do we want to do here? Customize the email text that I want to put. We can get all fancy there. Um, I can also send an incident report in email. That way, it says by default, you and your global admin will automatic, that way we'll know if somebody gets it. Or if you don't want to, we can uh, go ahead and send it to a specific box if we wanted. Um, and then finally, if we have Azure Information Protection, restrict access or encrypt the content. So I can go ahead and say I want to encrypt stuff, block it here. I just want to block them. Um, we're going to restrict that access. I could block that if I wanted. I'm not going to do that for this, but we could do that if desired. And then when we're ready, click next. Do we want to turn it on right away? Do you want to test it out first? And you can say, no, I'll keep it off and turn it on later. So you can go back to edit. Some great options. Once we're finished, go ahead, select next. Actually, let me go back. I'm going to say turn it on right away. Then it's going to have all the options we can review if we want. When I am finished, go ahead and click create. And that's it. It's that simple. It's that easy. It's creating the policy. I can go back later and edit. But there we go. There's my policy. You're going to give it around 24 hours uh, because policies have to provision and run a bunch of stuff. Uh, but once it's done, that's going to be in effect for my organization. It's easy. It's simple. And that's all it took to do it. So that's it. What do you think, right? It's easy. It's simple. If you've been doing DLP in your organization, nothing new under the sun here, right? You just go ahead, use the same process, but now we can leverage it for, again, those Teams chat and channel conversations. You can block, add ingestion, those kind of things you want to do, not allow people to transmit. Um, take advantage of it, right? So I have a lot of organizations. Just make sure, check if you're licensed to make sure you're able to get and, and see that if you're not seeing it. Um, but that's it. I mean, it is it is so simple. It's making compliance simple and cool. So with that, this is Mike Gennady bidding you have a great day, telling you get out there and get on the DLP for Teams, chat and channel conversations. Wishing you all have a great day. Take care and as always, ciao.